Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. I swear, I am trying to get back to being... Starting off the news this week, a new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has used potassium isotopes to estimate the amount and general placement of water and other volatile elements and compounds around Mars, which would in turn give scientists a better idea of the potential habitability of the red planet. Their findings led them to believe that Mars potentially isn't quite as wet as some have claimed. As such, they dismissed the claim that early Mars was a wetter planet than Earth. In addition, they come to the conclusion that a planet would need to be a certain size to retain enough water to allow it to be habitable, believing that Mars is too small for this. Mars is currently considered the next Earth, as in the next planet that humans will fully inhabit, with some arguing that its smaller size is actually an advantage for initial human habitation, as heavier objects would weigh less in Mars's reduced gravity, allowing for potentially easier construction works on the planet. And now over to Ben, who has some news about creatures that some would call dinosaurs. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news this week is a lot of exciting paleontological developments, including the naming and description of the oldest ankylosaur found so far. This new species, named Spicomelis afa, is very significant for several reasons. Firstly, as it comes from the Middle Jurassic of Morocco, it helps to confirm that, as expected, ankylosaurs had indeed diverged from the stegosaurs by this time. Secondly, it's the first ever ankylosaur to be named from Africa, being only the second ankylosaur known from the southern supercontinent of Gondwana, while almost all other ankylosaurs come from continents that used to be part of Laurasia, the northern supercontinent. And not only is Spicomelis filling this highly important gap in the evolution of dinosaurs, but its actual morphology is very interesting too. Unlike later ankylosaurs which had armour that was embedded in their skin, this African ankylosaur had spiked armour actually fused directly to its ribs, a very strange condition that's not known in any other kind of vertebrate, living or extinct. So it's an absolutely brilliant discovery that shows these dinosaurs were surprisingly diverse early on in their evolution, and hopefully paves the way for more amazing dinosaur discoveries to be made in this part of the world. Up next, we then have a pretty incredible paper describing the preservation of a nucleus in the cartilage of a dinosaur from the early Cretaceous. A remarkable fossil of the theropod Chordipteryx from northeast China actually preserves a fragment of cartilage which, although highly altered by the processes it underwent after being buried in sediment, contains the remains of chondrocytes, specialised cells that function to maintain the structure of the tissue. After demineralizing and staining the sample and then comparing the results to stained chicken cartilage, the researchers found that one of the Chordipteryx chondrocyte cells even contained a nucleus, and within it fossilized threads of chromatin, a DNA protein complex that helps to organize DNA molecules within cells, which is just absolutely mind-blowing. This is only the second time that fossil chromatin has been discovered in a vertebrate, after a specimen of the hadrosaur Hypacrosaurus was shown to preserve some in a paper last year, and further adds evidence to the hypothesis that cartilage is particularly prone to nuclear fossilization, and can potentially help us to better understand DNA preservation in the fossil record. And finally for this week is a great paper looking into the biomechanics of how dinosaurs ran. This paper generated a fully predictive, 3D, muscle-driven computer simulation of how the non-avian dinosaur Coelophysis would most likely have run, and came to an unexpected conclusion. Instead of the tail functioning as simply a static counterbalance when running, the simulation shows that it was in fact a crucial part of the process, flexing from side to side as the animal moved and acting as a mechanism for regulating angular momentum and improving the efficiency of the movement, being compared to the swinging arms of humans when we move. It's therefore proposed that such a mechanism was probably present in a lot of other bipedal non-bird dinosaurs with tails too. All of this is to say that basically, dinosaurs would have wagged their tails as they ran and would have looked very adorable. A truly historic scientific breakthrough. Well, that's all from me. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Just a heads up, we are very aware of the recently released Spinosaur paper that has just come out naming the two Baryonychines from the Isle of Wight. We'll be covering that in a special way next week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of 7 Days of Science, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.